crazy GoPro head here. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, today's video is all about the trunk. I'm gonna attempt to clog all the spoiler holes with some quick steel. This is a steel epoxy, I guess. I've never used it. I've seen videos of people using it. It looks like it works. It might work. I don't know. Again, I've never used it before. This is gonna be a first time for me. It sets in five minutes and it's hard as steel. So we'll, we'll see about that. No, it sets in five minutes, but the full cure time is one hour. So, so here goes nothing. I'm just gonna clean the surface around the holes uh, with some rubbing alcohol just to make sure everything's all nice and clean. So we got some good old 70% isopropyl alcohol. We're gonna prep the surface, give it a good little rub, a little scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. I'll do the same for the inside holes as well. Okay, so the area is prepped and now we're gonna get this quick steel ready to apply. How do you do this? Mix it up and apply. Okay, pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. We're opening the quick steel now. <laughs> Looks like a dang glue stick from elementary school. Now, I skipped a step. Safety first. Just gonna peel it back a bit. I'm literally gonna glob off a piece. Try a small piece first and then start going to town. You can kind of see two different colors there. I believe the darker stuff is gonna be the hardener. So we just wanna kind of knead it. Oh, it smells toxic too. Might want to get your gas mask. It sets in five minutes, so you kind of have to work fast. But as soon as all the colors are incorporated, it's one big gray blob now. I'm going to go on ahead and I guess just start pushing it freaking in. Start pressing it in and praying to the gods above. This is probably a big mistake, or this is going to be an awesome DIY. Maybe try from the top and kind of press it down. There we go. Now we're thinking with the dipsticks, Jimmy. There we go. Got a little double action there. Try not to do it too thick on the top. That's just more layers I'm going to have to sand. So my plan has already changed from the original. And that was to hit it from the bottom first and then wait for it to cure. And then do it from the top. But, I don't know, man. <laughs> kind of looks pretty good right there. But again, it's just going to freaking pop off the top, probably. So, boom, one hole's plugged already. Look at that. Custom, baby. I have a little blob left. Let me see if that's enough to maybe try this top one here. Looks a little more tricky because I can't really get my finger all the way. Let's see. I hope the GoPro's getting that. It's hard to see, but I just kind of... Globbed it on in there. On to the next glob. Gonna mix this on up and repeat. Oh, man, smells like a methane fart. Toxic, toxic, toxic. All right, so we have two of the three holes on this side plugged. Going ahead and uh, take off a glob of this. Start just freaking putting it in the hole. That one's kind of deep. Oh, oh. oh my God, you did, you did. Damn it. <laughs> Well, I just dropped the glob of it um, uh, down into here. Whoops. Try not to do that at home. <laughs> oh, dummy, 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 dummy. I get it on there. I need little, little girl fingers for this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Whew. Almost lost it again. There we go. There we go. So you got most of the glob there. I think I have a little bit of the... A little bit of something, something in there. Probably from the drop there. Again, I was only worried about the bottom at this point, but... Kind of got it set pretty good on the bottom side. Top side's looking pretty good as well. And I really hope this isn't going to be hard to sand. If it dries as hard as steel, I mean, that tells you right there that it might be a little tough to get through. It's actually looking not half bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, well, there we have it. We have the first layer on. Got a little glob there. A pretty big glob there. And you can't really see it, but a glob there. So we'll go on to the top side now and check it out. So I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to screw it up, but we do have some sort of blockage now. So I'm hoping this is going to dry as hard as steel 
and we're going to try to sand it smooth and make it look like the holes were never there. Wishful thinking, I know, but you know, maybe something will work out. That would be pretty cool if this ends up turning out and working. Enter title here. Fix your holes in your trunk for $5 or less. Cheap trunk hole fix, $5 or less. Now I think that tube was maybe six to seven bucks at AutoZone. Again, pretty dang cheap if it's gonna work out. Stay tuned and find out. Okay, here we go again. Break off a glob. Good news is we only have two holes on this side, so we're gonna use less of this liquid goop. Okay, we're gonna do, whoops, I just bonked my GoPro. Okay, this is kind of a big glob here, but we're gonna push it in there and smooth the edges. Not really smooth them, but not make it so bulky. That way it fills most of the hole. Have to go on the top here. Look, it's just splooging out there. So we'll just kind of push it in. Pushing from both sides, kind of keeping it somewhat under control down here. Again, there's you know a million different ways to do this, and this may not be the highest recommended way, but I'm down to try it. Try and form it on the top here. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to sand this smooth. Again, I'm I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure of anything at this point. Okay, now we're gonna take our other glob and try not to drop it down in the dark abyss here. More of a ball here, make it work out. Just form it around the bottom side and slowly but surely, you'll have your clogged, plugged up holes. God, this just feels so ghetto to me. And in a way, it really is. But just make sure you can't see any daylight through the other side. And you should have a seal, watertight seal here. Everything looks pretty kosher to me. Worst comes to worst, I start sanding and it falls through and uh, we start over and try something else. Not a big deal. Yeah, three holes on this side, two holes on this side. All filled up and we're just waiting for it to cure now. So we'll check back in with you guys in about an hour and we'll uh, see how this quick steel is setting up. Okay, about a couple hours have passed now, and we're going to check out our uh, hardened epoxy. Feels as hard as steel. Question is, will it sand smooth and cover up the holes entirely? So I'm just going to go on ahead and start to sand the globs. Well, I guess I'll start with one and see what grit sandpaper works the best. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to start with the small one, see how that works. So I happen to have a hundred grit sandpaper right here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start with the hundred grit and see how it starts to break down this material. So here we go. Very gentle, very gentle. I'm gonna start with one. That way if it screws up, I obviously won't continue to the others. So see how it's gonna sand on down. Probably should have gloves on for this too, but yeah, whatever, it's fine. So far, so good. It's smooth, but it definitely isn't flush yet, but we're getting there. Well, I'm pretty shocked at the results right now. It's sanded down pretty dang smooth. It's almost as if it was never there. So obviously we're gonna go back and spray the bare metal areas with their etching primer. And then we'll follow it up with probably a couple coats of the uh, just regular primer. Okay, let's go on ahead, start on the rest of them. Can't believe this is working. Can't believe it. I'm oh, very happy, very happy indeed. More sandpaper. Come on. Yeah. Hey. We got some crazier grit in here somewhere. A uh, hundred, hundred, oh, 90, there we go. Try some 90. Never used anything this aggressive. Hopefully it's not a mistake. Super thick. Here goes nothing. I'm trying to just target this area so I don't sand through all this over here. Maybe I could fold it up enough where it can become its own sanding block. Eh, maybe that's too aggressive. Let's go back to 100. Whew. 
croquet after breaking the sweat, sanding for about, I don't know, five, ten minutes. Uh, we have made uh, some progress here. So I'm liking these first two holes, or I mean, <laughs> what holes? No, I'm liking the first two uh, patches. They're really smooth. Um, this one, you could kind of feel a little bit of a low spot. I may reapply there, but uh, this one kind of gave me the most trouble. It may have been that debris that got into it um, earlier when I was actually putting it on. Oh, but there's something, something in there. Probably from the drop there. But uh, other than that, there's a little tiny low spot. You guys can kind of see it there. So I will reapply some of that steel on here, just in that area. Hopefully I can sand it smooth and flush, and we'll be uh, on to the next side. Hopefully the other side comes out nice and smooth like, that way I don't have to come back and reapply. But we will see, these are some small ones, and it looks like everything's looking good as far as the feel here. Feels like it's protruding up, no low spots. Same with this one, no low spots. This one has a low spot. And I think when it dried, it actually kind of sunk into the hole a tiny bit. And that's why I'm getting that little imperfection. Because these other two are looking pretty dang good. Anyways, let's get to sanding on the other holes and uh, see what we get. Sanding block would be ideal. And I think I might have something like that. I am very disorganized, as you can tell. Maybe I could kind of use this, wrap this around. We're going to go to town. I can be more accurate just with my fingers. I will see. I'm going to switch back to my fingers though. I feel like I can pinpoint the high areas better. Just because I can feel them. Okay, the verdict is in, and we're going to have to add more of this steel on here. Got a couple just sinking in spots here. It's not too noticeable, but you know, I'm trying to make it perfect. So we just applied our second layer of this epoxy steel. We're gonna wait about an hour, come back and check it out. I'm hoping this is gonna be the final layer of this stuff. So just one more round of sanding, and we should be looking good. You know what that sound means. It's time to get to sanding. I don't want to get a mask, it may get a little dusty. Here we go again. We got our 100 grit sandpaper and we're going to start going to town on this. Dang, this is coming out nice the second time. It is freaking almost perfect here. I started with 100 grit, getting most of the bulk down, and then I switched to uh, 120 grit just to finish it off and it seems to be working pretty well for me. So these holes are looking really good, they're feeling really good. So yeah, let's go on ahead and jump to the other side. Get these ones looking all nice and good like. All right, I think that concludes the sanding part. I probably was sanding for about 10 minutes, but uh, all the holes are looking nice and flush and nice and smooth. So I think it's time to uh, clean up this powder and uh, maybe get to putting on our first layer of etching primer. All right, just finished masking off the area now. Check it out. Kind of went maybe a little overkill on the masking part, but I am utilizing my cool Amazon purchase. So I'm pretty proud of this right here. So I just kind of went around the area with masking tape first and then came around and uh, laid down the rest of the tape and uh, masking, masking plastic. Not paper, plastic. Just the areas that we want to paint are exposed. So I think we're looking pretty good and we are uh, we're ready to start shaking the can and get to painting. Of course, we're starting with our self etch primer. This is the primer that adheres to metal. After we hit it with the etch primer, we're gonna do the two in one filler and sandable primer. It's pretty much the same process, just how we treated the other parts of the car. So we're just gonna repeat that process and uh, hopefully we have uh, awesome results. Be sure to always shake your can for at least one full minute vigorously before getting started. It could make or break your paint job. All right, our exact minute is up, so let's get to spraying. On my head we go. Now I'm gonna try to just target these bare metal spot areas. 
and then I'll come back with the regular primer and hit the rest of it. So I seem to have pretty good results doing it this way, so let's continue that. Just like that. Time to apply our next coat. Boom. Done. Good to go. What's up, what's up? Hey guys, we meet again. Uh, it is the next day, and uh, this is what the soul fetching primer is looking like. Looking smooth, can't even tell there were holes there. And we still haven't even uh, shot the primable, <laughs> and we still also have to shoot the uh, sandable primer and filler next. So far so good, man. The quick steel is holding up, and uh, it's looking like a pretty awesome fix to getting your trunk holes patched up and I think it's gonna look great under the wrap, so let's continue this process. Here we go again, same old routine. Just like that, gas mask on, remember, safety first. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, so the third and final coat is laid down now. Everything looking nice and smooth. We're gonna go back tomorrow once everything's cured and give it a nice sanding. Hopefully everything's gonna be smooth and the holes will be unnoticeable. And uh, we'll be one step closer to uh, this wrap. Yeah, right, this guy's never gonna wrap his car. That's about what it feels like. Anyways, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Boom, just like that, it's the next morning, and we're gonna tear off all this masking paper, and uh, we'll see how our paint job turned out. Ooh, looking so good, looking so good. Time to unwrap. Okay, where do I start? Nice, 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 nice. Here we go. Ooh, yeah. Best part to a paint job is taking off the paper. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Bread and butter of it all. Ooh, yeah. Looking bright, looking righteous. Okay, you got a very awkward looking shape here. Okay, yep, you guessed it. Next step is sanding. Starting with 400 grit sandpaper, let's go on ahead and start feathering in these edges and getting everything smooth again. Look at that, look at that. Feather in that edge nice and smooth. Perfect. Can't even tell that there's a transition of color or paint there. Perfect. I was using 400 grit sandpaper and I actually started doing the wet sand. Um, it seemed to start taking off more, uh, more paint a little easier, a little faster. So uh, yeah, I think that process works a little better for me. So wet sand with 400 grit sandpaper, very lightly, just around the edges, just kind of contour it together. And uh, yeah, you should have some pretty damn good results there. Perfect. So deja vu at this point, so I'm just gonna speed up the process and uh, we'll catch you guys when I'm all done. As you can see, the edge is nice and feathered in. You can see the two tones of color. We got the etching primer with the dark gray and then the uh, sandable primer on top of that. So that's the kind of effect you're looking for there. They say it's supposed to look like the end of a feather, but I don't know about that, but definitely looks two-toned and smoothed and off to the next side. This side's looking nice. Get it nice and wet before you start. I find it the best result is to hit the edge straight on and it slowly starts to break it down. Again, I've only been doing this for, oh, what, a couple weeks now, here and there. A lot of elbow grease involved here. All right, well, the sanding session has come to a close. Our edges are very looking good. Our edges are looking really good. 
everything's nice and feathered in. Everything's just smooth, nothing but smooth transition. All you're really looking for or feeling for is uh, just the transition. If you can feel a little lump or something, that means you gotta keep on sanding it and make sure that edge is nice and flat and uniform with the rest of the paint. So at this point, you're ready to, uh, you know, wrap, paint. Um, that's pretty much the only two options there. I guess this concludes the little DIY. Plug your trunk holes for $5 or less with the quick steel. Um, quick steel epoxy is the way to go, in my case. Depending on your situation, this may or may not work, or this may or may not be the best option for you. For me, it was the best option for me. It was cheap, affordable, quick, and easy. I mean, what more can you ask for? So, with that being said, there's nothing left to do on this trunk but to uh, maybe wrap it next. So hopefully I'll have some more videos out of the wrapping process of this car. I'll also have another video out. I'm also putting out another video and it's going to be debadging. Gonna need to remove this Impreza badge here. WRX Impreza badge there. I'm gonna have to remove my keyhole there. And again, I'm gonna have to remove the Subaru. And as you can see, the S is already wanting to come off. So that should be pretty easy for the most part. Getting off the residue may be a little tricky, but that's uh, nothing that I can't handle at this point. So that'll be another video individually, just to show you guys more in depth on how I'm gonna do it. But with that being said, uh, thank you guys for watching this little DIY on how to plug your trunk holes. I hope we can help you out. Let me know if you try this and if it works out for you. And uh, if you have any tips or tricks or uh, just advice for me, leave it down there in the comments. Um, hit that thumbs up button if you uh, want to see more little videos here and there. But too bad if you hit it or you don't hit it because I'm going to have more videos coming out. So uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter what you do. And that's all I got. So if anyone's looking for a spoiler for an 0607 WRX, um, I got it for the cheaps. So uh, hit me up and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.